Alrighty. And it says we are live. All right, we're live here at the Dale Jr. Download, the Bojangle Studio uh, for the Ask Jr. part of the show. And we told you last week that Leah uh, was doing her last show, and we have Hannah Newhouse here this week, uh, really doing a great job of filling in and helping us out. And um, she's gathered gathered your questions for today's Ask Jr., and we're excited about what you might have for us there. Hannah, go ahead. All right, so the first one is, uh, we've kind of talked about it a little bit beforehand, but what steps can NASCAR take to eliminate the flat tire problem with these next-gen cars? Could they reevaluate the wheel and tire combo? That question comes from Matt. Yeah, I think that they probably would do better off by looking at the wheel and the tire. Um, I've seen a lot of suggestions. we got to be careful about this. Whatever changes they may or are proposed to do to the car could affect the awesome product and racing that we saw on the racetrack. One of the things that I noticed during the race was a lot of the cars are way up in the air on the front end. All right, We've begged for years uh, to get these cars off the ground, to unseal them from the racetrack. And we thought forever, uh, we thought, man, well, that's impossible. You can't, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Because engineers will just figure out a way, you know, no matter what you do with the rules, they'll figure out a way to get them sealed back to the ground. Well, the idea now is, after watching that race, with the diffuser on the back of the car, getting the cars a little bit up in the air and allowing more air underneath, getting the backs down so that that air begins to speed up as it gets toward that diffuser, is creating a lot of overall downforce for these cars. But it's also, maybe, maybe, you have to ask the drivers, Allowing them to race uh, closer together, not be, you know, the dirty air is always going to be there. Maybe it's not as bad as it used to be. You know, if the car's up in the air and not sealed off, uh, you're, you're, you, know, you don't have a ton of downforce on the front of the car. It's not really working uh, like, it, like it typically would with the splitter right on the ground. So maybe when they do get in traffic, there's not such a massive shift in the balance of the car. But anyhow, uh, we've got the cars off the ground, we've got them unsealed. Every you know, it's what we wanted. Now it remains to be seen how the teams you know go forward and how they continue to set these cars up if that stays the same. But if you change the bottom of the car, raise anything up off the ground, take anything away, shorten that diffuser, uh, you may you know undo some of some of what we've done that's unsealed the cars or made the cars better when they're not you know sealed to the ground on the nose. So. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Like when you go changing uh, the bottom of the car, you might hurt the actual racing product. So uh, something with the tire, if possible, uh, is is maybe the better route. Getting a, uh, figuring out a way to get an inner liner in there, some way for the guys guys to 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 get back to the pits, uh, a run flat, if you will, if that's even possible. So. That's another thing. So if they make a stiffer sidewall that allows the drivers to somehow survive to the pits if they did get a flat or spin out, if they make the, the tire where it's harder, uh, as far as when it spins out, it doesn't spin and, and rip the tire uh, you know, or grind the tire to the air. Uh, all of that is really going to affect the product or the racing in uh, either a good way or a bad way. So you know, it definitely needs to be uh well thought out not not a quick you know not a quick fix not a um you know be be careful about this one because it could it could hurt the the actual racing product and we you know judging by everybody's feedback that was really a great racing product on sunday all right, another question and we've actually had a lot of people that are chiming in on the chat on uh youtube here they want to know what's going on with your guys' apparel. Would you like to clue anyone in on maybe why you guys have switched outfits is what I'm being alluded to here? We haven't switched, have we? I just grabbed the first thing out of my closet. Yeah, what too. are you talking about? This was hanging. This was... I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's just This is just tip, typically what I wear. Everybody knows I'm a big George Southern fan. Huge. Yeah. yeah. This is no big surprise. Mike's a filter time subscriber, likes the product. You know, I like clean air. <laughs> you guys are... 
Yeah. Plus, like, yeah. Y'all clowns. I'm glad clowns. they noticed it. You know, I'm glad they pay attention to what, what we wear. What we're wearing and right. how we They're, present ourselves. They do not miss a thing, okay. according to this. So the next one here is uh, from Higgy. A great moment yesterday was when Matt Kenseth keyed up and chatted with Joey Logano oh, yeah. during a caution, <laughs> bringing an old rivalry full circle on live TV. Yes. For you, what rival would you least expect to hear key up on your radio <laughs> and talk to you during the race? Kyle Busch. <laughs> um, yeah. I, you know, that, that would be pretty funny uh, for me to have anybody that I have was at odds with come across the radio during during a broadcast. Um. It it was a it was a great moment, and I thought Matt did a great job in the booth, and uh, you know I, I was I I thought he I thought he was a good you know balance with Clint, and Matt the great thing about having Matt in the booth is he's he's got a lot of new ideas and the way he sees the race, even though he's you know been out of the car a little bit, he's still very aware of what's what he's seeing and why he's seeing it and. Uh, he's picking up on a lot of new things that we're, you know, we're all learning this uh, next gen car together. We're all learning uh, about what these guys are dealing with, what drivers are facing. But he was fast on the he was he was a fast study, uh, and I thought he did a great job. I also love the Saturday booth with Logano and Blaney, and um, Adam Alexander did a great job of keeping them uh, corralled. But also allowing them to have fun, man. They were they were laughing and joking and and very honest. Uh, what a great listen that was on on Saturday with those two guys. So, uh, you know, not and, and you you can't put Blaney in there with just anybody. I don't know for some reason him and Joey seem to. I think they spend enough time around each other. They're comfortable, you know, jibber jabbering and goofing off. Um, you put people in there that don't spend time together, and and you're really you're really getting to know the guy, and it's quite awkward. But uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the broadcast. I believe Blaney even gave us a Dale Jr. download shout out. He sure yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. he that said was that neat. we were. He said we were going to be talking about our t- teammates' dust ups. Yeah, on the he on, was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, the next one comes from the side pocket kid. I know iRacing did its version of a Chicago street course. It's rumored that an actual event could be in play. What are your thoughts? Yeah. I – I watched the uh, I watched a little bit of the IndyCar weekend at St. Pete, uh, and I while I guess I need to ask what's the what's what's the uh, what what what's fun about watching cars race around a street course? I don't I can't answer that question for me. I can't sit here and go, man. I really wish we had a street course because I don't know why you know why street courses are better or different what's different about a street course as opposed to a a, a road course like Watkins Glen or Sonoma um you know why do why what do drivers think about street courses I, I know nothing about them and so they look challenging difficult uh frustrating a bit uh you know watching a driver try to figure out how to navigate them is is uh it's fun because you see that the drivers are struggling. Uh, they they're frust- It's frustrating to sort of work around there. But that's on you know that's with Indy Lights and Indy Cars. And um, I will say, what you know, my experience in in the virtual world on iRacing with the Chicago course didn't make me more excited. Uh, it, it I didn't think that our cars, you know went around there very well but uh that's 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 the virtual world and and the real world's going to be a little different um so i'm still not i'm not eager for it i'll be honest i'm not i'm i i'm short track give me more short tracks we added multiple road courses last year we got what seven road courses now or we had seven last year. i don't know how many we got this year we got enough um we didn't add more short tracks dirt bristol don't count we already have Bristol. I don't care if it's asphalt, dirt, concrete. You didn't add a new track. Um, the clash don't count. That's not. I want a new short track. I want a, you know, I want a North Wilsboro, a Nashville Fairgrounds, a South Boston. I want a legit short track uh, added to the schedule. And so that's that's my focus when it comes to, you know, we're on a rant, but uh, anyway, <laughs> rant on, man. I, yeah, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Chicago Road Course. I'd rather go back to the Chicago, Chicago Oval. Damn. Great racetrack. I'd rather go race there instead for going to Chicago. 
I was gonna say that kind of actually segues a good question that came in on the chat just a second ago from stubscupseries.com. He said, if you could pick a track somewhere between the 50s, 60s, and 70s, whether it's still thriving or not, to add back onto the NASCAR circuit in an ideal world, what would it be and why? The track to add back to the schedule? Yep. Well, I mean, I think it, do y'all go ahead and type in to, to Hannah on what that answer is. I think all y'all can answer that one for me. Oh, hold up. We're this is the game luck. now. Let's see. Oh, here. yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking. Someone said Anderson Speedway, Old Sun Valley Speedway. But they didn't run there. Rockingham. We knew that Rockingham, one was going to yeah. pop up. <laughs> that, that, that's not. If we're Del talking Jack. about bringing back a track, it has to be a place they they, they r- drove at in the 60s and 70s. Um, Hickory, North Hello? Yeah. Nashville. Nashville, Nashville Fairgrounds. Fairgrounds. I'd say Greenville Pickens. Nashville, Nashville Fairgrounds, Fairgrounds is, is above a, everything. Nashville yeah. Fairgrounds is the top of my list. Yes. And uh, am I getting spun out on the last lap uh, off the nose of somebody else's car? Uh, and the fans right on top of all of it, and just you know, I need to see. I, I need that. I need more of that in my life. Um, you know, South Boston and 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 some of these other you know tracks like that uh, have their place. I think in our top three series. I don't know if it's for Xfinity or or trucks. Um, you know, Indianapolis Raceway Park, such a great little racetrack. Um, I wish the Xfinity Series was still going there. My sister is an owner, loves us being at the big track. It's you know we're definitely going to get a sponsor more excited about that than sponsoring our car over at IRP. But for me as a fan and and a, and what I enjoy to watch, uh, those short tracks definitely beat them out. And continuing the short track conversation, um, Joseph Tolne said, outside of the grandfather clock at Martinsville Speedway, what do you think is the coolest racing trophy, and would you bring an old school trophy back? Yeah, the uh, the trophy from Bristol is really cool, very tall. Um, I was really short when I was a little boy, uh, but you know, any most little boys that thing's taller than 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 the average ten or twelve year old that Bristol trophy and dad had five or six of those things sitting up on when he built, he built his last house. He had this long shelf when he walked in the front door and looked to the right and all of the, all of the trophies is Bristol trophies sit up there. And, uh, I just, uh, always wanted one of them. It was so big, you know, most trophies that you would win were under three foot tall and they fit in this sort of, you know, they fit in this idyllic, idealist sort of vision of what a trophy size is, right? Basically, most of the trophies that we get given today or we see one today, they're creative. Uh, they match whatever sponsor is is promoting the race that day. But they fit in this sort of, you know, box of two to three foot. But this Bristol trophy is like, you know, five foot tall. This thing's massive. And... Um, didn't your dad win? Didn't your dad win that big old? Did he win the big old bear at Atlanta? I'm trying to remember I if it was remember. him. But remember Atlanta, they give you yeah. this giant freaking mm-hmm. bear. If I was going to bring a trophy back, I would bring back the championship trophy that we gave away uh, in the in the Winston Cup days. Uh, I think I, I forget the last year that they gave away that wooden yeah uh, trophy. Winston Cup. But you know this is. The trophy we have now is definitely a beautiful trophy, but it's that image of sustainability. You know, when you see it, you know it. Like when that trophy pops up on the screen, oh, that's that. That's 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 a Martinsville clock, mm-hmm. right? And and I know when we change sponsors and we change eras and and whatever something changes that triggers this new design, somebody's got to put their new spin on there. You know, their impression of what this you know a modern take. And uh, we, I like that, you know, I like I, I, that trophy that we gave away for years is still grand enough. It's still cool enough. Uh, and the, you know what it is when you see it. There's no mistaking that that is a Winston Cup trophy, championship trophy. The only way to get it is to be the champion. And so uh, if I walk in, if you, if you take a fan, an average fan, even me, and took you walk me into the champion's house. He's got to tell me where which one's that championship trophy. Mm. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Hard to argue that. Which one's that? Which one's the championship trophy? Oh, that one. Oh, all right. I couldn't point it out of a lineup. 
So, um, but if you saw the Winston Cup trophy, championship trophy, that wooden big thing, you knew it. Everybody knew what that trophy was. The only way, everybody knew how to get one. I always appreciate two short track racing trophies, like the Rattler 250, where they make you stand in victory lane with the rattlesnake. No, and they you. put it. Uh, yeah. I'm like, I don't know that I'd want to win that race. Nope. I might hit the brakes at the start <laughs> finish sure. line. Um, <laughs> run second and hope you don't win by disqualification. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should run third. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> uh, Philly Jesse said, I know how much you love music. Has Dirty Mo thought of expanding and adding a music label one day? Dude, so for years, I was riding into work today thinking about this very thing. I've begged Mike for years and <laughs> to be able to weave music into our shows some way, somehow. And uh, we've done it in the past. So, uh, I was a big fan of uh, Danger Summer, still am. Uh, when they were started making music again, I, I forced Mike into putting some of that stuff on the back end of our shows. <laughs> Probably, you know, some people liked it. Maybe other people skipped right through it. But um, I visualize me and Mike and us as a group here. Our, I visualize us when we're at our best as your favorite morning show group of you know when you're riding into work and you're listening to the the morning show i when we're at our best i think that's who we are right we're 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 a morning show news talk radio whatever it is but i would love to you know in my in the perfect world we're we're you know we're dropping songs into what we're doing right that's never really going to happen in our podcast. <laughs> Stop. It, well, I, never say I, never I've, I've had con- say i don't tell you all the conversations oh, okay. i have and all the things oh. i have planned that that's not as that's not nearly as far away as you think it okay. is. Okay. See, we're about ready to drop wow. the bomb that I just signed a singing label. Right. Mike Davis just In signed fact, me. this is your audition. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. You got ten seconds. Just kidding. I can I can sub host, but I can't sing. American Idol. So, sing so what, my what's, life. what are you talking about here? I, I'm not going to go any further. Come no, on, no. man. No, no, of course not. No, I'm not going to go <laughs> sit there and, and talk about. it. I'm just saying that that's not that far off. I've always daydreamed about being a disc jockey or what it would be like <laughs> to be, you know, not a. No, I don't want to sit on. I don't want to be be on talk. You know, I don't want to be on FM radio all day. But I've always daydreamed about having like a a specialty show. Like a, I tried to pitch one to Mike one time about, hey man, why don't, what could I do a music driven podcast? It was like an hour. Here's my favorite ten songs this week. Yes. Do you remember what why we couldn't do exactly <laughs> your vision? Because it's legal. It's illegal. <laughs> That's what I said. It's, it's illegal. Illegal. Yeah. Little well, I mean, like, right, right. You know, there's there's these little, uh, yeah. you know, production. You're not allowed. Ah, oh, come on. We people. could we could have played. You know, let me promote 15 your music. Fifteen seconds want, of it. And I'm not, only wanting to tell everybody to listen to this song. That's why I said, hey, you know, it'd be fun. People you wouldn't like, want that. You like? Uh, How well, come artists wouldn't be like? Hell yeah. Because like, they also like to be song. paid. Upcoming artists would like it. Well, that That's makes about it. them more popular and gets their song out there. I'm, you know, I don't mind paying a little bit of rights to be able to promote their music. Well, that's what we would have to do. And by the way, again, I just want to say that's <laughs> that's a realistic thing yeah. that we can be, you know, seeing on our platform. to do that because, you know, every, every. You love to show off the fact that, like, you won't. I think. I think you like to have people go, hey, who's that band? Because I think that's what you get a kick out of. So, like, you discovered some yeah. song or band that now everybody else in the room likes, and yeah. you just want us to ask you about them. Yeah, I am the guy that you absolutely don't want to start a conversation <laughs> about music with because you're going right. to get uh, you know, 20 text messages of all these links to this song and that song. But I like that. I mean, you introduced me to some music. Some people do, but other people are like, yeah, I like hey, man. That. I really just wanted to know the name of that one song. I don't want to know <laughs> about right. everything you downloaded this week. But that's that's how you learn new artists. Yeah, I agree. You got to be ready. It, it's time and a place. You got to be willing to accept See, all of the. Do you use Spotify? Huh? See, I think that you should make a shared Spotify, like a public I got, playlist. I got one. Okay, see, so then people can see what Dale's downloading yes. yeah, he does each that. week on Spotify. Oh, see, I'm just late to the game. Sorry, guys. But no, I That's don't okay. publicly promote <laughs> it. No, he doesn't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But we've done, he's done, um, we've for, done for sponsors. I can't remember who it was, but there's the been past. some Spotify playlists yeah. that he's contributed. Okay. For and, public, oh, but. and when we do the big network, when our races are on NBC, sometimes the producers are, are, will reach out to us and say hey what songs do y'all would y'all like i'll give you dale you can have five songs to pick yeah when so when we go to commercial or we come back from break that song will be playing so so that's really fun that's cool it's as close as i get to being a dj (laughs) 
Because <laughs> we're when you're doing the race in the booth, you're like, uh, this is a funny thing. So when we're doing the race in the booth, and a song plays, if it's if everybody thinks it's a crappy song, Rick Allen will go, that's definitely Juniors. <laughs> 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 During the race, he'll hold the button down, and only where we are talking just to each other, and go, "You definitely picked that one." That was, that was, that <laughs> is he right? Definitely. He's right. No, he'll no, do he's it on purpose. Right. He'll, know gotcha. he'll know you didn't do it, but it'll oh. be, like, be like a slow song or something. He'll be like, "Yeah, that's Junior." <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. It's funny, man. Some of the stuff that goes on the booth, you'd be surprised. Anyhow, we got any more? Uh, we got one more here from Three ID Infantry Vet. What is your Eleanor car, that one that you want to buy, but you just can't get a hold of it or justify spending the money on Chevy it. Chevy Nomad. Yeah. Uh, 50, you know, mid 50s Nomad. My dad had one and uh, it was beautiful, perfect from top to bottom. It's parked in the in DI right now. The bottom of it was polished, mirror polished, and he parked it on glass so you could see the bottom. You know, yep. you look at yeah. the glass. And, oh, the detail. It was amazing. Uh, the I want a Nomad that is on the opposite spectrum of that. Rougher than hell. Total road car. Let's get in it and go. Go wherever we want to go. Grocery store, whatever. Dependable. Got a good drivetrain, you know, uh, with a LS swap or something. But um, that, I don't care if somebody rolls a shopping cart into the side <laughs> of it, right? I don't care. It's okay. I just, But I love the wagon. I want a wagon and the Nomad. I want a wagon because I got a family. And uh, so I'm hopefully going to finish that thing one day. Hannah. Yes. I want to add one more thing. Okay. Was that the last question? Yeah. That was the last question. I want to say if anybody's on this Ask uh, Junior live stream right now and you're going to Vegas, we will see you this weekend because Ooh. we've got the oh. Dirty That's Mo Media right. Ultimate Las Vegas experience at Vegas. There's been some, I, hope, I hope there's some people on the stream right now that are going because we are looking forward to it. Uh, going to be a good time. And I also want to just tease something. I'm very close, very close, not quite yet, but very close to doing the same thing for the Bristol Dirt Race, which is just, you know, it's not long, it's not far off. However, um, if, if you were one of the many people that said, hey, we would love to go do this, but it's just too far, Vegas is on the West Coast, this is, we need to be on the East Coast, you're about to get your wish. And so be looking for it on our social media platforms. Awesome. We we have some people in the chat that are going. By the way, I'm available for Bristol Dirt, just in case you needed to know that. Well, come on. Yeah, I think <laughs> come on. bring the booth here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, th there's Perfect. a prize for it. You can just, you know, you buy a ticket. I love no, that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'll just no, put that on we'll my We'll make invoice. it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it this weekend. We'll see everybody out there in Vegas. That's right. Hey, great job, Hannah, on all the questions. Uh, appreciate her being here today to help us out. And um, hopefully everybody is having a, a great start to their week. Alan Sir Jr. was our guest in the show. He was amazing. He had to get out of here and, and catch a flight home. But we talked about uh, his new book. This is it right here. It's called A Checkered Past. Jade Gerst helped him write this book. Jade Gerst and I worked together he wrote a book with me uh, mike was uh an employee of jade's for many years so you might recognize that name but this book is super transparent uh, he talks about all of the the very very low low times he had as well as everything that he accomplished in his career so he leaves uh he leaves nothing uh off the table and when we got to talk to him in here we discussed quite a bit of that so um pretty incredible guy to talk to uh, and I can't wait for y'all to hear the, the podcast later. But thank y'all for tuning in to the Ask Junior portion of the show here at the Bojangle Studio for the Dale Junior Download. We'll see you next week. <clears throat>